After playing 12 hours of the Shinobi Striker closed beta, I think there are some pros and some cons we need to talk about. Overall, I think the game has a lot of potential, but the development team still has a lot of work ahead of them. If they want this game to succeed, they need to do a lot because the current state of the game is plagued with problems that uh, so we'll go over them today and that's the main reason why I'm making this video, because these problems need to be addressed! Otherwise this game will go down as a really bad Naruto game. My name is Globku and this is my review of the Shinobi Striker closed beta. So obviously there are a few things where we're gonna have to give this game a pass because it is a closed beta, it's still lacking a lot of content, but we fully expect to see way more in the final game. We expect to see more game modes than simply just capture the flag, more maps as well, more customization options, not only visual options for our custom ninja, but also more options for jutsu, which will certainly come with the introduction of uh, more characters in the future. So assuming all of that is in place in the final game and we actually have a decent amount of game modes and the game modes are fun, okay, let's say we have a good game with a lot of problems. That's basically where I'm at right now, the, and uh, some of the problems actually come from some balancing issues which come from the lack of options. Now I don't know if it was just the lack of options and that's why I'm including this as a problem or if some abilities are just straight out broken, but the defense type character was just extremely overpowered. All you need to do as a defense type was land on the flag, activate your sand shield and that will basically give you a free capture. Then using your ninja movement and the spiky human boulder you would easily run away from ninjas chasing you. This was easily the most powerful loadout in the entire beta. A good defense type would win games on his own. 1v4, doesn't matter. And that's because there weren't a lot of ways to counter this guy. The way to counter his sand shield was either with an ultimate attack, which let's be real, that's not a real counter. Ultimate attacks take way too long to charge in comparison to the sand shield, so that's, that's really not a good way to counter that. Or you could counter the defense type by having another defense type on your team. That was it. In my opinion, the way the game is right now, these abilities are way too powerful. You, you can't just give a character a free capture because he has a certain ability equipped and moving that fast with the flag by using the human boulder is also a bit broken but uh, balance changes are also sure to come in the future and we also don't know if certain abilities that get announced will be able to counter the sand shield a lot better so maybe the sand shield at launch won't actually be a problem but right now it is certainly a problem the balancing issues don't stop there however let's take two very similar abilities the Shidori and the Rasengan these are on completely different levels in the game for no apparent reason. I found the Rasengan to be completely useless, it, it misses more often than not. While the tracking on the Shidori, it was almost always on point. Why is there a big difference between these two Jutsu that are on the same level in the anime? Like, you clash with those two Jutsu in the anime. I can't tell you why they are so different, but if you're using the Rasengan, chances are you'll miss, at least more often than when using the Shidori or the Raikiri. These tracking issues surpass these two Jutsu, however, because the game tries to assist you way too much, in my opinion. Remember how defense type players are able to get away with the flag by using the human boulder jutsu? Well, in theory, you could do the same with the Shidori or the Rasengan. You would just use it in midair and fly away from your opponents. But in the game, you can't do that, because if there's an enemy player anywhere near you, it doesn't matter whether you're pointing your thumb stick away from the player, the game will always target that enemy. Even if you're not locked on, this is still the case. And it can be very disorienting because sometimes the enemy isn't even in your line of sight. Maybe you didn't even know the enemy was there, you were just trying to get away as fast as possible. And that's why I think, in my opinion, the game assists you way too much. If you're not locked on, the game should not seek a target. If you're clearly pointing in a direction with a thumbstick, the character should not be going the opposite direction. It should not be tracking the nearest enemy, and this makes it impossible for us to use most jutsu as mobility. Even the spiky human boulder will actually automatically track the enemy when you activate it. The thing is, after activating it, you have manual control so you can correct your course. And that's why it ended up being such a powerful ability, because you had manual control. But that's not all there is to game assistance, there are also a lot of problems with the camera. A few minor problems that can ruin a player two, and bigger problems that you just run into almost every single match. Every time you use a substitution jutsu, the camera automatically centers on the player that attacked you. Again, this happens even if you're trying to run away, even if you're not locked on. So suddenly you're, you're not only trying to escape from enemies, you're also fighting the camera controls. If you're not locked on, the camera should not automatically turn to the player who attacked you. But the biggest camera problem, in my opinion, is when you actually lock on to the enemy target. The fights in Shinobi Striker are very movement intensive, so you need a good camera. This is why you lock on to your target, so you don't lose sight of your opponent while you're jumping around and throwing jutsu. But if for some reason, 
This fight against an enemy ninja takes you into a corner, the camera does not know how to react. You won't be able to understand what's going on at all. So while you're getting beat up in a corner, you have to manually remove lock on and then rotate the camera so you can see what's happening. And only then can you react accordingly. And by that time, you're either dead or you've taken a lot of damage. Camera issues plagued almost every match that I played. I consider them to be a major issue with this game, uh, but they're still not the biggest issue in my opinion. That would be servers. Now the server conversation is a complicated one because some people will argue that they had no problems and others will argue that they had terrible experiences. But that is exactly why there is a problem. It is completely random whether or not you get a good server. Once you hit quick play, it's a flip of a coin. And a bad server in Shinobi Striker is one of the most infuriating things you can imagine. Because the game handles everything on the server side, e even movement can be very stuttery and hard to control, even if you're just by yourself, not even surrounded by enemy ninja. The simple act of throwing a wire kunai into the wall is something that you're scared of doing because you never know if your character will actually attach to that wall or just fall straight to the ground. And that's of course not even to mention the amount of attacks you can miss because of lag or getting hit by an opponent with an attack that you haven't even seen yet. I don't remember a game where lag was as infuriating as it is in Shinobi Striker. And if you still think servers are not a problem, here's a quick montage of issues. I did have good servers and some very pleasant matches and we'll talk about that stuff later, but a competitive game that is multiplayer focused cannot have servers like this. People give Storm Games a pass because it has story mode in addition to multiplayer. Here, the focus is multiplayer. The game will not get a pass if we're flipping a coin every time we join a match. Imagine that they add competitive and you join a match and you lose your rank because you got a bad server. That's something that's completely out of your control. I mean, even the overall game just looks like it has performance issues when the servers are bad, like uh, there are frame rate drops or something. It's a mess, it's unacceptable, and this must be addressed before the game launches. If the game launches it with servers like this, then it will be too late. The game will get a bad reputation, players will leave and never come back. And speaking of servers, we did have some fast queues, but we also had some inexplicably long queues. And I say inexplicable because of several reasons. One, it doesn't look like the server was limited to players of the same region. We had matches with people from other continents, so that doesn't seem to be the case. Two, there was no party mode or players in a party, which sometimes makes the matchmaking a bit trickier. And three, there was only one playlist. There was literally no reasons for queue times to be this long. Now that's a long list of problems. They have a lot of work ahead of them for sure but I still think this game has the potential to be something special and that's because of the good times that I had with the game whenever I'd get into a good server here's some stuff that I loved about it I love the mobility I love the chakra jump double jump air dash and the wire kunai it gives your ninja this aerial mobility that is not that common in video games certainly not multiplayer games and it is really satisfying to pull off especially if you're dodging attacks in the air while moving you truly feel like a ninja when you can predict where attacks attacks are coming from and you use your mobility skills to avoid the incoming attacks. I also love the depth of the battles. Jumping headfirst into a fight was almost always a sure way to get you killed. If you were playing against a more experienced player, that was just not the way to approach these battles. And that's awesome because there's a strategic layer to it that is not obvious at first sight. Knowing when to use your substitution jutsu is of the utmost importance because the cooldown on that ability is pretty big. So coming from the storm games where you can just use four substitutions in a row, this should make players a bit more careful on how they use that ability. I saw many players using it after getting hit by a kunai from far away and that's just a mistake. From that moment I knew those players were vulnerable to my attacks because the substitution jutsu was gone. Unless of course you were talking about Kakashi with his Sharingan ability which made things a little bit tougher. But in lag free servers fights were very tactical. You can even win a 2v1 fight if you're using your abilities in a clever way and when you fight as a team that complexity only goes up and I think that's what will keep this game alive for a really long time 
time, figuring out different team comps, which jutsu to bring into battle, what works best when cooperating with your teammates. Now, in the beta the cooperation was mostly non-verbal, as voice chat was not enabled for the beta, and the chat wheel, it really isn't the best, but when you could read each other's minds, it was pretty epic. And finally, I love how the different character types play, well, almost all character types, I think the attack types got the short straw on this one. The loadout for the custom shinobi attack type was, oh, so bad. Kakashi was really the only one saving the attack types, but uh, standing back and healing your team from a safe position as your custom ninja, or actually being closer to the battle as a healing type still, but with Sakura, who actually had uh, a loadout that allowed her to be a little bit more aggressive. With a defense type, you would get up in the face of danger because uh, your sword was incredibly powerful. You had a shield and a human spike boulder. Or playing as the range type, interrupting jutsu from a distance with your infinite kunai, or just throwing jutsu from a distance as well to support your teammates. That made for some variety in gameplay. It kept the beta fun, so I can only imagine how much fun it will be once we actually have all the abilities to try out. Assuming, of course, all the problems get fixed. Now, I had a few minor problems that I don't think are worth getting into uh, right now, but sh just so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Why does the Kirin only deal damage on the first strike if the lightning strikes the area for a good three seconds? That's a weird disconnect between the visual representation of the Jutsu and what it actually does in-game. A lot of abilities have this disconnect, they need some work, but those are problems that I think can actually be addressed after the game launches. For now, this is my letter to the developer. Fix your game, because underneath the problems, there's a really awesome game waiting to come out. But that's enough for me. If you got any thoughts on Shinobi Striker, let me know in those comments down below. If you want to see how overpowered that defense type character is, check out our live stream with that character. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also the video at the bottom. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Glaubko, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy!